Okay, so um, and talk about one of the more important things we've been doing on the technical side, the RISC V, which is uh, defining these profiles. So I'll talk about profiles in the, the profile roadmap. Um, so we all know RISC V is a modular extensible ISA. Um, there's a base ISA, there's standard ISA extensions that add new features. Um, you can have custom ISA extensions. So this is great, and nobody wants to get rid of this flexibility because a lot of products, this is exactly what people want. It's a way of exquisitely customizing what they have in their core for their particular use case, right? Um, the problem is that there's a massive number of possible feature combinations. A lot of people get scared or think, why, how can we possibly um, survive uh, all these different features, even though in reality it's really no different than any other architecture. Um, um, so why are we developing these standard ISA profiles? If you have a large software ecosystem, like distributions for a rich operating system, um, you really need uniformity across RISC V systems. Um, you know, it's not practical to recompile QA tens of thousands of packages um, for different platforms. Um, so everybody's going to benefit from having this uniform profile of RISC V ISA features. Uh, customers, the binaries can run everywhere. Um, vendors don't have to support their own custom builds. They can just use builds from elsewhere. And the software community can really focus their efforts on these combinations, uh, the features as being the standard things. So those are why we're doing these profiles. But I want to emphasize, RISC-V world does not now become only profiles. RISC-V world is much bigger than profiles. Profiles are only for this small part of the world, which is application processes. Right? There are many, 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 many other kinds of processors in the world that will all be RISC-V. Um, they don't need profiles or don't seem to need them. Right. This talk is really about profiles for application processes. Now, those are often the, um, you know, the stars of a chip. If EVs is the, the big high-end cores, and they're important because they have so much software running there, and that software is what really needs these profiles. But we're not getting rid of all the other uses of RISC-V, right? So the talk is mainly about profiles, primarily for application processes, or only for application processes, but the rest of RISC-V world is still there, not going away. Now, we have had people ask about profiles for other categories of processor, but really, we haven't seen the drive from the community to put energy into developing them, unlike we have seen for the application processes. But the community is open to that. It's just somebody has to come out from the community and drive that. So next thing I want to talk about is profiles are about the ISA features. And I want to make a distinction between profiles, execution environments, and platforms. Um, so profiles are only about the ISA, the ISA features. Execution environments provide a lot more additional specification, things like what's the initial state of a computation, of an execution context, what happens when you make an environment call, what are the syscall numbers. All that is part of the execution environment, and that's a much uh, broader set of specs. And Aaron's going to be talking right after me about the, the first one we're defining, which is the standard OSA, rich OS, supervisor execution environment. That'll nail that down for software. Uh, execution environment is only about software, software interfaces. The next level out, or the way you think about this, hardware platforms is a different kind of spec saying, what's in a box that you buy? Like, how does it boot? What are the components? What can you be assured is going to be in there? When you do the software discovery process, you'll find this kind of IOMMU with these features. Right? So that's a hardware platform spec. We're starting work on that uh, this coming year to try and define RISC-V standard hardware platforms. But you should think about these things as sort of layers of the onion. ISA profiles are really just about the ISA. Execution environments are just abstract about this is the interface supervisor code will see, for example, talking to a system. It could be emulated, it could be hardware. The hardware platform is about a concrete box and how it, how it operates. Okay? So these are different things. So I'm just talking about profiles, and profiles are only about ISA features. So what's the goal of the profiles? The two main goals are reduce optionality and also the granularity of the optionality. So there'll be a few pretty coarse grain options, and a subset of those options are not an option. You either do the whole option or none of it, right? So we're reducing the optionality and the granularity of the options. We're also raising RISC-V capability over time. Now, combination of points one and two means there's going to be an increasing amount of mandatory stuff you have to put in a RISC-V application processor to be compatible with the profiles. So that's just uh, a logical conclusion, right? So profiles are really going to provide this ISA roadmap for future RISC-V application processes. And a software ecosystem for apps processes are going to coalesce around these profiles is what's going to be happening. So let's talk about what is a profile. So um, 
There is a GitHub doc, you can go read the details. I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly, we don't have a lot of time, um, but just give you an idea of what's in the profile. So there's a base ISA that has to be present, for example, RV64i. There's a set of mandatory ISA features that must be present. And then there's a set of optional ISA features that may or may not be present, um, but if they're claimed to be present, the entire option has to be there. You can't subset a piece of that option, it has to be the whole thing or nothing, right? So we have names, so we have a naming scheme. Um, so profile name strings begin with RV for S5. Um, there's actually two kinds of profiles. I lied a little when I said we're only doing application processes. For the purposes of branding, we defined RVI to be generic, unprivileged ISA, and this is really so people can say they have something that is risk five, right? So RVI is uh, generic, unprivileged instructions. RVA are the profiles for application processes, and I'll focus mostly on those. Um, so another component in the string, so you'll have RVA, and then uh, a number string, which is the number of years after the year 2000. So 20, 22, 23, um, 1047, you know, when long distance future, will it be RVA back then, right? Um, the most privileged mode in the profile. So when we define, I'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, supervisor mode profile isn't only for supervisor mode, it's for user mode and supervisor mode working together. So when you define a profile, you define the outermost privilege mode in that profile. And so there are different profiles for just user mode versus um, supervisor mode. And then the X line of the base ISA, 3264 for now. So some examples, um, RVI 20, U32. This is unprivileged generic instructions for a 32-bit uh, RISC-V core. That's that profile. Um, RVA 20, S64, on the other hand, is um, application processor profile of supervisor and user mode. Right, everything. So let's talk about execution environments. This is sort of standard terminology in RISC-V land. I, people often get confused about this. I'm trying to... Um, hopefully later we'll improve the documentation too. So execution environment is the thing that runs a computation. And a computation is contained in some execution context, right? So think of this as a execution context, could be a user process or a link system, or the whole OS, guest OS in a hypervisor system, right? The, the execution context interacts with this environment through a few means. One is you can make environment calls, so I do e-call. Execution environment, if it knows what that equal is, system call will do something and return back to the execution, maybe, in that execution context, right? Um, you may get a fatal trap. You do something that's not allowed, the system will trap out and your computation will finish. That's another interaction. You may get interrupts, and so your execution context suddenly finds itself running a trap handler, right? That's something that's happened. The environment has communicated this to you. Now, one thing people get confused about, we also have what we call invisible traps. And these are things that are, the hardware may do this to emulate some missing functionality. But from the per point of view of the specification, it doesn't exist. It's just something you did. As far as the execution context is concerned, the thing happened. Functionally, it happened, right? How it happened is up to the implementation. Invisible traps are just part of the implementation. So you have execution context interact with the environment in these ways. So in the profiles, what you see as we talk about supervisor mode profiles, user mode profiles, a little different in those interactions. So user mode profile, you know, the environment, there's an environment call in the profile. Because we're defining only an ISA, only the ISA features the profile, we just say in the user profile there is an e-call that calls the environment. It makes a requested trap to the environment. The ISA profile does not say what the syscall numbers are, what they do, because the profiles are usable for multiple OSs. You can use this profile for Linux, BSD, QNX, whatever OS you have, right? It's the job of the supervisor mode execution environment to define that, and that's what Aaron will be talking about next. So that's a further level of specialization saying, oh, you have the profile, but what do those equals actually do? The profile just says you will have equals, and they'll call the environment. So just to go over the specific ones we're developing, um, so RVA20 is uh, basically what we did is encode the Unix standard for RISC-V. It's been around since 2016. So at a workshop at MIT in 2016, we kind of sat around and said, what should be the standard thing that distros compile for, talking to the folks at Red Hat? And we said, okay, it's RV64GC, right? Plus what happened to be in the, the systems around at the time in the uh, privilege level. So basically went back and more formally encoded what was the de facto standard back then, and we call that RVA20, because most of the specs were ratified finally in 2019. 
So that's why we're going to call that RVA20. And so that is the de facto standard that most distros are using right now, is that RVA20 standard. And we're just formalizing its name. Um, so just to go over, people talk about RISC V and fragmentation, hundreds of options. You actually go look at Linux land, what is there? So in RVA20 U64, user land ISA, um, most things are mandatory. The only option you have is whether performance counters are visible or not. That's actually the only option, right? So no, I, you, you may add stuff to it, but that doesn't stop the standard stuff that just targets this from working, right? That's the way it is in current platforms. Now, the supervisor um, profile, which also includes the supervisor instructions as well as user mode, the reason they go together, people often confuse thinking S is only the supervisor stuff. When you have um, supervisor, you want to describe how does user mode code interact with that supervisor mode. So that's part of the profile. Like we call a contain trap. When a user mode uh, does something like an e-call, it has a contain trap into supervisor mode. And that's part of the ISA profile definition, what happens there. So that's why U and S are both included in RVA 20 S64. So in RVA 20 S64, a lot of stuff is just fixed. The only real option there is whether you support SV48, which is a 48-bit VM space. So SV39 is mandatory. And whether you have SV48 is really the only option in SV, uh, sorry, in RVA 20 S64. So this was de facto what people have been doing um, in uh, RISC-V Unix land. So moving ahead, uh, we were doing the next one, and we, we picked RVA 22 as the next profile release. And this is now frozen. And there's a link to the GitHub. You can go read the doc there. And I encourage you to go read that. There's a lot of details. Um, and it's too much to cover in a short presentation. Um, but just to go over the highlights, so in RVA 22, um, just focus on U U64 for now, there's a bunch of mandatory additions. So the Bitmanip, you know, ZBA, ZBC, uh, ZBS, they're all added as mandatory. Um, ZI imports, mandatory. The cache management operations, mandatory. Uh, minimal support for FP16, uh, mandatory. And ZKT, which is um, data value independent timing for a certain subset of the integer instructions, right? All those things are mandatory now in RVA22. Um, also, we mandated now the cache line size is 64 bytes, and also the reservation set size is 64 bytes. That's now mandated. Um, now, the options we have are vectors, are now an option. Um, full FP16 support, ZFH is an option. And the two crypto, scalar crypto standards, ZKN, ZKS, for NIST and Shangmi based standards, those are both options, right? Now, in the supervisor set, um, things have been changing. The priv architecture moved to 112. Um, we added page-based memory attributes, PBMT, um, SINVAL, and a few others. Those are mandatory additions to the supervisor mode. Uh, and options are the hypervisor, uh, supervisor time compare, um, larger page tables, uh, larger uh, page ranges with SV and Outbot, and a few others, right? So I'm not covering everything, I'm just giving an idea. So what's happening is we add stuff. Some stuff goes into mandatory. Usually the stuff that has the biggest blast radius that covers a lot of things like the ZBA, for example, you want to use that everywhere. So you just say it's mandatory, everybody has to have it. Some things will always be options. So crypto, for example, will always be an option because different crypto standards are in use in different jurisdictions. And thankfully, they're relatively small footprint in the code base, what's impacted there. But those are things that will always be options, right? We just have to maintain those as options because of geopolitical reasons. So. How are we gonna manage evolution going forward? So the plan is to keep an annual cadence of new profiles, at least for now, so one a year. But um, that's hard for the whole ecosystem to keep up with. It's important, though, to have that progression for all the vendors and everybody else producing stuff. But what the idea is we're gonna designate certain versions as major releases every few years. And the idea, those are ones that ecosystems can sort of anchor on and assume this is a, a good point to uh, build on and maybe stay stable for a while on those major releases. So effectively, that RVA20 was our first major release, right? And it's been around a while, it's still being used. Um, and uh, the next major release this will be RVA23. So although RVA22 is the first one defining, as we're defining profiles at all, uh, we sort of sat down and thought about what would be a good major release. And there's a bunch of high value items that are getting added um, this year that will make it into RVA23, which is why we think that would be a good point to designate that as a major release. So just to go over that, what we're proposing to add, um, the vectors now that were optional now become mandatory in RVA23. Um, some uh, floating point converts, the non-temporal locality hint loads and stores, 
um, some additional 16-bit compress instructions. Supervisor time compare is now mandatory um, at the supervisor mode. Uh, on the options now, we have vector crypto, so higher performance vector crypto, um, bunch of floating point stuff, um, and a few other additions. Now, this RVA23 is not set yet. This is still just early days. We are you know, negotiating. And part of this is it's a negotiation between all the vendors, the software ecosystem, when will people be ready? What's the right thing to include? Though I was saying RVA23 is going to be an important release for RISC-V as RISC-V emerges at the highest performance levels and across a whole range of other applications. I get a feeling RVA23 is going to be, you know, a very important long-term stable release for us. So I think our intent is to spend time getting this right and making sure there's no substantial gaps um, rather than getting it done quickly and rushing it out. Okay, that's the plan for RVA23. All right. That was it. I'll take questions. And Aaron will be up next talking about SEE. So the reason why you don't show hypervisor there is that more of a performance improvement. The profile of the work is either hypervisor there or not. You mind re asking that for the people online? Oh, or do you want to just paraphrase? Could you hear? Yes, yeah, so Dan was asking about the hypervisor. So um, we don't want to make that mandatory. Um, it's still there. This is, this is kind of new things um, uh, relative to RVA 22. Got a question in front of me. I missed it. Sorry. Here I come. Uh, and the crypto standards are, are you guys in the standards committee? They are proposing um, the post quantum crypto uh, support for the latest NIST uh, proposals. Yeah, there, there are task groups looking at that. Yeah, and the people have been asking for those. Okay. And then one other question. Um, when you release a new profile that's a superset of a previous profile, is soft from the original previous profile guaranteed to run on a new profile? Um, I think mostly yes. I think there'll be some changes in the kernel. We'll sometimes make that not completely correct, though it's very rare that something will change there. I think over time, we are um, near term, that'll very much be true. I think over time, you may find we end up deprecating things. Um, looking and taking the long game, so 10, 20 years out, some things might start dropping out, but at least the short term, um, Things are backwards compatible, yes. More questions for Kirsten. Come on, somebody's got a tough one to stump him. If not, I think we give him a round of applause and say thank you very much. Let's do that. Thank you.